I would like to speak briefly and simply about a serious national condition. These 13 words open Senator Margaret Chase Smith's Declaration of Conscience, a timeless speech about the meaning of American democracy. On June 1, 1950, Senator Smith delivered her Declaration of Conscience in response to the fear-mongering of Senator Joseph McCarthy and others. In her speech, she communicated the problems of partisanship, the exploitation of fear, and the disregard of constitutional freedoms to help her colleagues understand how their behavior endangered the Constitution they swore to uphold. In doing so, she displayed American spirit and a deep understanding of the responsibility ordinary citizens and politicians have, then is now, in protecting the American way of life. After World War II, communism replaced fascism as the leading threat to democracy. Americans were grim as they watched the brutal communist ideology spread. They believed communists carried in them the germs of death for society. Hysteria ensued that this contagion had spread to the U.S. government, and America was going to fall. Sensing opportunity, conservatives conflated Soviet spies, communists, socialists, and Democrats to smear their opponents. One such politician, Republican Senator Joseph McCarthy, rose to prominence in 1950 when he claimed to know of 205 communists in the State Department. Despite never uncovering a Soviet spy, his constant and specific accusations propelled him into headlines and into political power. McCarthy's baseless accusations twisted the truth for his own ends. People feared voicing left-leaning ideas lest they be denounced. McCarthy's extrajudicial tactics rendered the accused defenseless, leaving their personal and professional lives in ruin. Republican leadership supported his destructive conduct, believing fear could lead to a Republican presidency. Robert Taft, an influential senator, told McCarthy to keep punching and, if one case doesn't work, try another. In this atmosphere of uncertainty, Republicans and Democrats alike simply deferred to the loudest voices. A wave of fear had struck Washington. America, once a beacon of democracy, was now a swamp of suspicion and distrust. In the name of public security, America was tearing itself apart. Senator Smith couldn't quiet her misgivings. Some of us who had uh, felt that communism was creeping in thought perhaps he did have something and hoped he did have. But as he stood up there waving his papers and refused to let anyone see his documentation, it made us suspicious. When no one stepped forward, Smith wrote a statement and a speech to preface it. She was not an orator, was the sole female senator, and was a freshman senator when they were expected to be seen and not heard. But she felt she had to very clear to her that some of the tactics that Joe McCarthy was using were not right morally, ethically, legally, constitutionally, and someone can just speak up and say something. Senator Smith had a very fine sense of what was right and what was wrong, and damaging people's reputations willy-nilly was just wrong. Her speech describes the national feeling of fear and frustration that could result in the end of everything that we Americans hold dear. I speak simply and briefly in the hope that my words will be taken to heart. It is high time for the United States Senate to do some soul searching. It is high time that we remember that we have sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution. She reminded her colleagues of the right to criticize, to hold unpopular beliefs, and to independent thought. Rights that if not protected, none of us could call our souls our own. Thought control would have set in. Freedom of speech has been so abused by some that it is not exercised by others. I don't want to see the Republican Party ride to political victory on the four horsemen of calumny. Fear, ignorance, bigotry, and smear. It might be a fleeting victory for the Republican Party. It would be a more lasting defeat for the American people. She accused both parties of playing directly into the communist design of confuse, divide, and conquer. As an American, I want to see our nation recapture the strength and unity it once had when we fought the enemy instead of ourselves. She urged both parties to stop thinking politically as Republicans and Democrats and start thinking patriotically as Americans about national security based on individual freedom. It is high time that we all stopped being tools and victims of totalitarian techniques. Techniques that, if continued here unchecked, will surely end 
what we have come to cherish as the American way of life. The thousands of letters Senator Smith received ran eight to one in favor of her speech, with people calling it 100% American, straightforward, transcended all parties, politics, and pettiness, soul-stirring. You said everything that needed to be said, and you said it well. No speech I have ever heard ring more true to American tradition than yours. Continue the good fight. A lot of average people are with you, even if they don't make much noise. The voice of the national conscience has spoken from your throat. By one act of political courage, you have justified a lifetime in politics. Newspapers called her speech necessary for the salvation of the country, a draft of clean, wholesome air, an oratorical rapier, and an appeal for national honesty and decency. Senator Smith's declaration of conscience was a model of clear thinking and straightforward language. The clarity of the speech um, is something that I think is very significant. And I think the reason that it can still speak to us 70 years later. Senator Smith's speech was the first significant warning about McCarthy's tactics. Their terrible consequences became more clear over the next three years and led to his censure. Smith had given up her chance at the vice presidency, lost a committee position, and was challenged for her seat by a McCarthy proxy candidate because she dared to speak. But she didn't regret endangering her career to save the country she served. McCarthy once said, when a great democracy is destroyed, it will not be from enemies from without, but rather because of enemies from within. He was referring to communist spies, but the Declaration of Conscience identified the true threat as the Americans who forgot they were united by their shared values and belief in the Constitution. We must not only protect free speech and diversity of opinion, but also speak out against those who wish to silence others, spread hate, and reject intellectual honesty. There is strength in diversity, and we must acknowledge the privilege it is to live in a country where diversity and respectful dissent are celebrated. The danger wasn't McCarthy. It was those who didn't stop him. No man can terrorize a whole nation unless we are all his accomplices. When we accept the statements and proposals of demagogues because we are too lazy to think, we can blame no one but ourselves for subsequent events. We are closer to surrendering our freedom than most of us are willing to recognize or admit. Smith's speech was not a plea to McCarthy, but to the Senate to recommit themselves to democracy. The United States wasn't repressed by communists, but by anti-communists, those who made people afraid to exercise their fundamental rights, those who, in the name of protecting freedom, took it away. Today, as in 1950, what binds our nation is threatened. It's 70 years ago, but we can see the first inklings of what happens when people identify themselves with, with the power are eager to take power, get power, keep power um, without any um, morality behind it. The themes and principles outlined in the Declaration of Conscience are of critical importance today. Senator Smith's speech outlines the important lesson that we must all work to denounce fear-mongering, bigotry, and hate. Only if people choose democracy over partisanship will democracy triumph. But those who want to fight for America must first understand what they are fighting for. Smith's courageous stand against false accusation and character assassination and her call to set aside partisan differences and come together as Americans still speak to us. Americans should be able to have unpopular ideas. They should be able to speak freely. They should be free to criti be critical. You know, there are these times when we've got to set our partisan differences aside and realize we're all Americans. E pluribus unum, from many, we have to be one. The Declaration of Conscience transcends its time and reminds America of its principles. It was about being true to what America should be. It may have been courageous, it may have been heroic, but ultimately it was a speech about conscience, about right and wrong. 1950 and McCarthy were fleeting moments, but the truth Senator Smith communicated continued to be key to understanding what it means to be American. The Declaration of Conscience harkens back to America's ideals, spoken when America was in danger of forgetting them. It outlines what America aspires to, while reminding us we have a long way to go. In straightforward language, it expresses the complexity and necessity of understanding American democracy, an ideology weakened by blind conformity and united by diversity, in thoughts, in beliefs, and in speech.